guys and welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. We are into the final rotation of the cursed city of Centranos. It goes by many names. Sometimes it is the Hellhole City of Centranos. Um, there are some more profane names for Soul Cross as well, specifically. What I want to do in this video is do a bit of a, a review of what we've got to face and just talk about any sort of stages or any problems so you can forecast. There's a champion training event about to start tomorrow, so that would be a good time for you to start upgrading some heroes, some champions, if you need them for this rotation. Last time I went from the bottom up, this time we're going to go from the top down. We're going to first look at Amius. Now, Amius, the strategies have been evolving as people have kind of been playing it more often and we've come to the realization now that you generally don't need as much of the mechanics as you would think I always look when I come into here first to see is there a way that I can one shot it right do I have a champion that has some sort of mechanics that I can just kill it very quickly so we do have Fushan Fushan was in the first rotation he's back but this time we don't have as many ally attackers so you you do have some limitations here in terms of just like what you're going to be able to run. Like we've really, really only got Kreela and Morag. Now Morag is not 100% all team and neither is Kreela. But you could run like a double Kreela, even a triple Kreela comp to make this work. We also have Roxam in here as well. Roxam can do the decreased defense weaken. I've got it at a six star, but there's other options as well. Now from a, if you can't kind of kill it in one go, what other options do you have? Well, we would look to see if there is a heal reduction. And we do have Frostbringer who is very good for heal reduction. A1 heal reduction, so you can control it whenever you need. It's pretty consistent. We also have some other options here in terms of Ironclad. This was used quite well in the last rotation. It has an A1 heal reduction. Not as reliable as Frostbringer, but could work. We also have Tormund, apparently. I didn't know Tormund did heal reduction. Does he do heal reduction? Oh, he does. There you go. So you could use a Tormund as well. I had no idea. So there's, there's quite a lot of heal reduction options here. I think that's also great. Venomage is back in rotation as well. So, if you know, you can use a Venomage. I personally will probably use my Garrel. I'll be honest, that's my plan here. I will likely use Fushan, and then I'm going to unload my Double Whisper, and I will probably use the six-star Roxam to set up decreased defense, and I'm just going to kill it as quickly as I can. The only thing I might do is drop this for an increase attack option. Um, I did like increase attack, increase crit rate, like a Creela. I might just bring the Creela in. Uh, to back it up um, instead or we could drop the Garol and bring the Fushan something of that nature I will do and I will just try and kill it really quickly I was able to do it last time in, in about 20 turns and I'd imagine that's what people will do here so that is Amius I think there's plenty of options here normally Amius if you've got a, a decent hard mode team is is not the not the barrier that for a lot of people in Soulcross is Soulcross is the worst one that's where it really gets horrible I think now with more heal reduction options we're getting more access to souls there's lots more different champions available. You know, time is going on. People are picking up some more mythical champions. It's becoming a little bit more accessible. I think this set of options here, I mean, they've even got Knight Revenant, so you could run like a Jorgid if you've got it. Like, you could basically run a Jorgid Fushan and, and kill it with double, like double Kreela, triple Kreela as an option um, available to you. Um, there's also a Newt. Newt's in rotation, so you've got like really quick burst killing. So yeah, I can probably run Newt, Double Whisper, and uh, uh, and it'll just die. So I think Amius this time is pretty good to go. Um, I always like to check Bommel here to see what we've got, because Bommel can be quite frustrating for people, because you still need, you know, to be able to do it. There isn't any freeze options. So this one, potentially, could be a little bit difficult. We might fight our way at the end of the video here to see what I would do to try and run it, see if I can beat it. Um, any sort of difficulties here? Do we have any bosses that are pretty pretty substantial? Finite bosses are always really hard because you can't turn me to control them. So you need either a freeze or lots of multi hitters to really to really get it going. Generally, only until you get into like soul cross does it become insanely hard. But a lot of people still struggle here. Now I will say you're pretty good to go here because you've got Newt Neldo. So this should not be a problem if you've got one of these champions or Blizzard. If you've got any of these three champions, even your Carl, like this should be pretty comfortable. I would not be worried about that because of those champions. We've got Borgoth and um, the normal spider. That's probably okay. Again, Borgoth, if you are struggling with the Scarab King, all you need is someone who can poison and someone like Nishak or Akimtum and put them in high regen, high resist. Now, you still need to kill the spider, but you can just do that with a standard AoE or, or max HP or something of that nature. But Borgoth is all about putting someone in poison, in high resist, in regen, and just tank it out. Just don't worry about the mechanics of the boss, just poison it. Like, over here is another one. 
I will just look for someone who's got poisons like a rich toff would be great here. You could do a farrakin. Put them in high resistance. E even someone as good as Aaron, you know, Jane, Erin S. Why? Because she's got 100% A1 poison and just put it on auto. Go get a cup of tea, come back in 10 minutes and it will be done. That is the way to do it. High resist, regen, and you will not lose to that. So though those bosses are fine. This one can be quite tricky because of Agreth. You've got to be careful in terms of cleanse. And what they tend to do is they don't give you the option for a cleanse. See, there is no cleanse. This is a Melga. And I'll be honest, I think Melga might be a uh, might be a champion you want to upgrade for this rotation. She's going to be, I think, quite useful. She does have the ability to... Uh, re does she remove one random diva from a random ally? So that's nowhere near good enough for, for Agreth. So here is just going to be a case of a revive mechanic. So if we can't do that, you can't block it. Uh, do we have the ability to transfer debuff no transferring of debuffs so this is going to be a very difficult situation what you're probably going to have to do is take the first poisons attack the dragon boss so you don't extend the debuff poisons and then somehow one shot the agreth now you do have access to narciss and newt if you if you got the guaranteed narciss and you did the newt fusion so you can do a lot of quick burst damage actually stoltus is amazing stoltus can just solo this I've just realized this because he can't take poisons. So if you've got a Stoltus, he comes in here and he can just solo this boss in regen. Both of them. Because he will never die. He will not die from both of them. You can just heal up. So he could be really, really good. Um, so yeah, if you've got Stoltus, great. But if you don't have those three, you're going to struggle with this one. Um, where have they put the key? This And that is the key boss. That's the key boss. Okay, so I would imagine this is going to be a pain point for many players. If you didn't get the Newt, if you didn't have Stoltus, if you didn't get Narciss, you're looking at Krisk, Timit the Fool. Um, you know, Black Knight's not a bad healer. Could help you with the healing aspect, but increasing defense isn't going to help you stay alive, really. That's the main issue here. You're just going to have to whittle it down. Maybe maybe some shields from Miscreated Monster from the stun can help mitigate some of the damage you're going to take. But there is a complete lack of cleansing ability here on the, on these these heroes, so that's a bit of a problem. Uh, we do have Jireg, a bit of ally protection. We've got Sigmund. There's lots of protection here. There's just not a lot of cleansing, which is what you really want with an Agreth, and they do this all the time. Anything else here? There's a Sorath boss. I think this is fine as long as there's a burn. Uh, is there a burn? Yeah, you've got Teela. You've got um, Kripkin Graal. You've got Jorg. You've got Ultimate Galak. That's fine. There's also a Rotus. You can block Revive if you have him. Uh, Lydia's not in here, but let's find Ceres in this mix-up as well. This one looks to be okay. Not too bad. Um, I don't really care too much about Cobble Market because I feel like even mid-game accounts can probably get a little bit of progress in Cobble Market because of the difficulty curve of these bosses. Like Spider and Eternal Dragon, they're not too difficult at level 100. You're probably a good level rank 60, can do a lot of damage here. Take a quick look over in Dead Rise. What have we got going on? We've got the Eternal Dragon. That is going to be defense support with Sylvan Watchers. So probably you can do some like, you know, Venus, maybe uh, Uko could do some work. We've got Nia. Uh, there's not a lot of damage to this. Creedence is probably the best option for damage. We could, you know, utilize a bit of Ayla Life Braid, um, the Panda, maybe Armaga Max HP as well. Probably is good. Okay there. What's the key boss? We are going to have Irogoth and Hard Spider. What do we got here? Attack Skinwalkers, Razzle Varg, Nishak. You know, Val's a free Doom Tower legendary once you get there. Got Akim, Tums, Fenax, Zargalas, you know, Weregrins, Gwyndolin, if you've got the guarantee there. I just summoned my Gwyndolin. I think this one's okay as well. These ones don't look too bad. Uh, some of these floors can be a little bit awkward. Like this one last rotation was a little bit nasty because it was just very restrictive. So you might find there's an odd floor that's pretty difficult. But I think all of these are, you know, these are relatively okay. There's no way for the finite. It's going to wreck, wreck that. So I think, you know, this looks okay so far. Amius looks okay. This is so far the hardest stage. And I think Dark Fae, HP support, our man's, we'll, we'll, stun, we'll basically stun control your uh, clones and steal the boss's turn meter. So our man's is really powerful here. Not a lot of damage. It's going to be a slow and steady. And the thing is, you're, you're not going to want to have too many tanky teams. So in terms of like wave, like removing the, the clones, like obviously you can kill the boss with like uh, with the poisons, but there's not really a massive amount of AOE damage here. 
I have to say, there's, there's a distinct lack of AoE damage. So this one's going to be a slow and steady. You might be able to build. You know, I, I keep seeing this guy. I might actually have to build this guy up because I keep seeing him everywhere. Melga and Samson so far, I think, are the ones that are going to be required. Right, let's get into the worst part. This is the part that I just gave up with last rotation. I couldn't do the S17. It was just too much effort. Let's see if they've blocked us at stage six this time or whether we can go deep. So first thing, the two entrance points. We've got Ice Golem hard here. How difficult this? You got Duchess. You got Urost, free Doom Tower legendary. Once you get him, there's Magnar. There's Vogoth. There's a Stagnite. This should be fine. There's a Nart. This is really good as well. If you've got a Nazana, especially a higher weight console, she she appears in some difficult stages, and this is actually very very good kit for a lot of different stages. A one, you can use it in stun set. You've got an ally protection, decrease attack. I think this one will be fine. So first things first, S1. What have we got in S1? This is the first way you can get into Soul Cross. We've got Spirit Attack, Dark Elf, Undead Horde, and Demon Spawn. We're fighting Tormins, so we don't really want to be buffing too much. And I don't think we have a block debuffs that really is going to work there. Can we remove debuffs? No. So we're going to have to fight the freeze a little bit. But what we do have is Delva, AoE Decrease Defense. That is a very good start. AoE, a decreased defense. We also have Luria. Luria is a great epic for this. Lots of big AoE damage. So both of these heroes, both of these champions can be very good. If you've got someone like Suzerain Katone, will be very good. If you've got Ruel, be careful with his A3 on wave 3, but will do a very good job. And Mashaled is probably going to be able to solo this as well a little bit with his fears. So overall... If you've got some of these epics, I think it's fine. You can build a team around it. Anax is not bad either. But options are limited. There's not that many champions. Gorlos Helmor, by the way, very, very good AoE decreased defense from an epic point of view. If you don't have some of these ep legendaries, then Gorlos is a great epic as well. You could build a team around these three for these waves and then add some support. You will be a bit glass cannon. We can always use the new Queen Eva. This damage multiplier has gone up. It will reset our abilities. Queen Eva could be another good one. I might build it up anyway because... Queen Eva is quite good for Hydra and Arena now. Uh, S2, then these, these next stages are normally fine. If you're going to go through S1, you need to go to S2, which means you're probably going to do this with like a Pistophus, maybe double Geo. Thylessia, I'd recommend you build up if you've got her. Fergan can do a good job. A bit limited in options. It's very Pistophus heavy, but probably if you do something like Thea with Thylessia and Geomancer, that could probably work, but not many options there. S3, Ninja, Zinogre, Gwyneth. Gwyneth Dark Hale probably going to be fine here. The early stages of Soul Cross are much more accessible, but again, like, you know, Judge is probably very good as well. He's a, it's an AoE, but he pumps out a lot of debuffs and actually hits really hard on this A1 if you stack up a lot of debuffs. So I definitely think he's a great option here. Uh, you can always go to something like a Sniper as well or a Kel and the Shriek. There's, there's plenty of options here. The other way to get into Soul Cross is S4. And this one, Baron, Fortis, Whisper. For me, this is going to be easy because I have Baron, Fortis, and Whisper. They will wreck this stage. There's also access to Arbiter, so that one should be okay. Iron Twins. Now, Iron Twins doesn't hit too hard in Soul Cross, so all you need to do is stay alive. And the way I would recommend you do it is if there is no Geomancer, which there doesn't appear to be here, then you just need to bring someone with a decreased speed, so you slow the boss down, which is Kimmy. You could bring a Tainix. It's a pretty good one, right? Decreased speed. Pretty good chance. It's 100%, is it? 50, 60, 70... Yes, 100% chance Tainix. So Tainix can be the budget option. Put a decreased speed on, and then you just want to make sure you stay alive like an increased defense. You've got multiple options here, and just slowly whittle it down, doing a bit of damage. If you've got some burns, great. You can use a Michinaki, you can use a Drexar. You should be able to clear that. Is X6, S6 going to block us? S6 and S8 for the last two rotations have been very awful. Is it going to block us? Newt gives us access. That's not too bad. Morag. But we are starting to run out of champions. Like I, So basically only four legendaries are rank five. That isn't uncommon. <laughs> That's crazy to think about. Hoskerel, by the way, absolute hard carry here. If you've got him, Hoskerel will hard carry you here. He's so, so, so good. I actually have held two four-star souls for a situation like this where if I didn't have access to Nergigante Archer or Marta, I would have needed those Hoskerels to crowd control and I would have made them both and put rank four on them. So... Hoskerel is a great budget option. Archer will dominate with Marta. So I can just do this, this, and this, and I will not struggle. You've even got a Valkyrie here as well for damage Valk if you want. So then you've got an option to go through S7. S7, Vlad, Arbiter again. Any team that's got Arbiter will always have a good chance of winning because you get revived, turn me a boost healing. Um, you can run like double Cold Heart. Silar's great here. So I think that's okay. 
or you can go through the awaken stage. Now for me, how am I going to do this? Well, we're going to do Archer probably for control. We'll do Garrel. Then I need probably like Seeker to make up the stars. And I need to now get two four stars. So our attack is going to have to be one of them. And then a three star to finish it off. What have we got here? We've got decrease. Not too bad. Probably a Tayral to finish it off. That's probably how I will do it. And we'll just kill it with Garrel. That will be the way to do it. So this one should be okay if you've got some stars. Otherwise, go through S7. Now, S8 is all about Mistrider Daihi. This guy will be the absolute MVP requirement. If you don't have him, you're going to hate life. The only other way you can do this, I think, is if you do double Zargala. There was a wave in last rotation like this. And the way you set it up is Zargala 1 will do crack armor to set up decreased defense. And then your second Zargala comes in with Devastate to kill that enemy. And then that will activate Crack Armor to finish all other enemies off. Then you make sure your second Zargala has the mastery that gives her 18 more speed when she kills three enemies. So that when you get to wave two, she instead opens with Crack Armor. And then your first Zargala opens with Devastate. That kills wave two. And then you just need to build a team that can survive wave three, which is not too bad. It's a lot of turn to control them and Delianas can get out of control. So you probably need to build some support around this. So you probably want to build something like a, um, a hippo to keep yourself alive. You could build a flannon. He's got an ally attack, which is pretty good. It's not bad at all. You know, so it's a pretty good setup. Or you can just build some other support around here, like you could build a uh, Margrave for some ally protection, or you can build in some this here. But again, by this point, I'd be using Mr. Adadithi to finish that wave off. So I think it's okay. But again, you are starting to see the problem. This rotation for Soulcross is not fun. It's very, very restrictive. Sand Devil, there isn't a reviver here that is normally what we would typically go to. Normally with Sand Devil, we're looking for a reviver. We're looking for someone here who can keep our team alive. We have Morley. We also have Rian the Conjurer. So you've got to keep them alive. If you can tank the damage with them, keep them alive, then you can revive it. And then it's going to be a case of, you know, slowly killing them. I don't think we have a an actual sleep that we can put on the enemy. So we do have Cornelia. So maybe uh, YST can teach me a method to use Cornelia for some great success to basically sleep the boss. That will delay the boss's nuke if you can sleep it. But again, there's not many good damage dealers here. There's like a Brogni for burns, Ghostborn for like a, an attack buff. There's some poisons, but there's no one here that I would literally jump to. Maybe Husk, but max HP is going to be heavily capped. There's no big hitter like before um, that could really do lots of damage. It's a Fatalis, but I don't really think his damage is going to cover us. Um, so yeah, damage is going to be a bit awkward here, but it's just a case of surviving, I think. I think you can revive, you're okay. Uh, what we got here, S10. That should be fine. We've got two Void Legendaries, for me at least. If you haven't got them, then the limits will, will go down. You either have to go S13 or S S16. Those are your two paths. If you go S13, this is crucial. Gaius carries S13. He carried the last rotation. You've also got Rhodus. You've got Shemnath. You've got then the Gwyneth Dark Kale. Gwyneth Dark Kale is a very, very strong, free, epic setup. They come from Doom Tower. They're very good, both of them. Uh, along with Judge, that could be a budget option. If you don't go that way, you go to S16. And again, you're using Arbiter here. But there is so little damage outside of the Void Pool. If you haven't got a Void Legendary, like Tormin is your best bet. You could use Supreme El Elhane, actually. Supreme El Elhane is probably your best shout because it was a fusion. I always try to think about the champions that people have. I don't want to just say, hey, go use Void Legendaries because it's very hard to acquire. Tormin with maybe Supreme El Hain because Tormin was obviously free from the Titan event that we had in December time. That could make it work here. And then you have, this is going to be difficult. This was impossible for me last rotation. This is going to be difficult. Uh, I don't know really the best way forward. Morrigan seems to be the best course of action due to the, the, the continuous heal reduction at the end, right? This is always going to be on the boss as long as the boss's shield is down. You also get substantial turn meter control for your team and you also have the ability to place a decrease speed on the A1. So it kind of like fills that decrease speed heal reduction role. Then you need hits. So it's going to have to be this one for sure. You're going to have to use Ronda. You could probably use Fushan for his A3, but not his A1 necessarily. You can get try and roll Rotus's luck on the A1. That's going to be pretty hard. But let's just take a look at what you don't have. Do you have Reflect? No. Do you have Counterattack? Not AoE. Do you have Increased Defense? I think Virgum Car maybe. Oh, I, you could probably use Isala the Mourner. 
to do the increased defense and put her with faultless defense. Or you can do Virgum card. Does he do? Yeah, so you've got two increased defense options. You might need to go to one of those. You also need to block debuffs or cleanse. So block debuffs wise, we do have Charge of the Rye, but it's only a one turn. So you're probably going to have to use her as a cleanse, but you could use her as a cleanse reviver with another turn meter boost. But she only attacks once. You could use Manaya. She only attacks once. That's the issue here. All these cleansers only attack once. Now, if you go for a remove debuff instance instead, because obviously you don't want to take those decreased speeds, you can go for what I think is the best option, Raglan. Because Raglan gives you a triple hit A1 with turn meter boost and then a full cleanse as well as a heal and a very good revive. So if you need to revive someone, you can. So I will probably be doing Raglan. But again, the, the options are very limited here. Very, very limited. Once you've got your cleanse set up, you need multi-hits. So you're literally going through this going, okay, who can multi-hit? Who has got enough hits here? Because you need to get 18 stacks. And right now we've got, on an A1 point of view, 7 out of the 18. Maybe 8 with a Phantom Touch, right? Because 3 hits on a 5 star is pretty high. So 8 hits. I need to find another 10 more hits from 2 positions. And there is no ally attack apart from... A very, very poor Corp Catacomb Counselor that's going to do two random allies, which is not ideal. So you've got to find those 10 hits from somewhere. Now, you can bring someone like a Romantu. That's four hits. And a Fushan. That's four hits. That's eight hits in total. you still not got the 11. you still not got your 18. So you're either going to have to out outspeed the boss using your turn meter boosting. And then hopefully get decreased speed on the boss to slow him down. And then you can make up those. Or you are going to have to drop one of these and basically bring a... Uh, an increased defense, like a Virgum Car and a Sal of the Mourner. Probably I would recommend a Sal of the Mourner because you get a back of Revive. You also get a decreased attack in there as well. So it's going to be more viable than last rotation, but it's going to be hard. We're getting into the horrible phase now. I don't know how you beat this one. I'm looking at this going, Rare Magic Epic, and I've got to defeat a double Rota Siffy Ultimate Death Knight Necret combo with a Law and Archmage. I, I don't get it. And let some, maybe someone in, in the comments can let me know what I'm missing here because I'm looking at the, risk, the, the available people here. Like Excruciator is the only one that I can think of that is even going to come close to doing any sort of damage. Yes, Archmage Helmet is good damage. Allures are not bad damage. And maybe you can just run multiple Allures. Maybe you run a, a Horde in to kill the Rotus. But like trying to scale a Horde in to do enough damage is going to be very difficult. But I'm looking at this going, this is just ridiculous. Like, why are there restrictions to such an extreme? We have 850 champions in the game, and they restrict it to just these. It's going to have to be Helmet for the waves. Like, you've got to get to wave 3. I'm, I'm saying I don't even, don't even know how to kill wave 3, but you've got to get there first. So Helmet's going to have to come in, and probably, you know, the, the Allures, uh, which looks pretty, pretty nasty. Uh, the final boss is then up here. 21, 5 unique champions, or 6 unique champions. I have six unique champions for the stage. Fortunately, they're good, at least. Right? These are great champions. I can probably run this team and it will probably do it. But good lord, if you don't have Michinaki and Kimi, you've got no chance. Absolute no chance. Which means you have to go through 14, which again, you're dependent exclusively on Daihi and also Thalesia. If you haven't got those two, no chance. There's no chance you clear this without those two. And 19 is always a bit of a horrific show. You do get Padraig. But again, you see why I was saying about Samson. I think Samson might have to come up here to help me if I ever want to do this. But you've got to get rid of double Taras Marichka here with Padraig and Samson and Baby Cow, Loriaka. It's just, I don't even want to entertain trying that. The double boss over here should be okay because uh, we don't have the same issues we had last rotation, which was they were all tanky. Last rotation, the challenge was how do I build a very squishy team but still do what I needed to do. This rotation, we can absolutely, you, you could run a Gurgle, you can run an Emic Taunt team. You can run um, Die He in here, Man Eaters to stop yourself from dying. Um, in terms of turn meter control, in terms of turn meter control, what have we got? Tumas here, we've got Man Eaters 100% turn meter drop for the Dark Fey, which is great. And also Man Eaters can also do the block debuffs for the poisons from the boss. I think this one is absolutely, I don't think this, if you've got Man Eaters, you should be fine here. There's lots of options for you available. Uh, and then this, this one is also quite difficult normally. And I think it will be easier because we have access to Newt. So we can kill the Spider Queen very quickly. But this is always quite difficult because of the volume of debuffs that you take. And again, we don't have a block debuffs. Uh, I think this is like maybe an AoE block debuffs. But it's only on for one turn. So it gives you like one turn grace. That's going to get stripped pretty quickly. There's no real increased resistance here. There is no 
cleanse. There's no remove debuffs here that, you know, you've got like near as a single target cleanse. At least we have a blizzard that we can, you know, use for some burning or something. So like we, we can get enough hits for the boss here because we can run Ronda, we can run blizzard for that multi hit. So you at least have a decent, like a decent role here. Um, but you then got to try and kill the queen amongst all of this as well. You could probably run a trunder. This one's probably going to be doable, but it's still going to be very difficult. Um, so yeah, so that is Soul Cross. I think this one is harder. I don't think it's as hard as the last rotation, but it's certainly up there. Like S18, <laughs> so few chances. Some of these restrictions are so crazy. It's it's beyond me. Look at like S12. I meant to kill all this wave with Ghost Spawn, Visionary, and Morley. Like, an amalga like there's so little damage it's just going to take you such a long period of time to kill them um it's it's ridiculous like that that's the issue with these damages there's just so little damage agreth ice golem could be quite tricky uh again stoltus is going to be the mvp a little bit here uh you've also got kyoko for the uh the a2 decrease attack which is great you've got taragi decrease attack as long as you have a decrease attack for the boss, it's normally okay. Vassal of Seal is not a bad healer. Again, Nazana Nazan can come in here and do a bit of a job for you. So as long as you've got a decrease attack by Skull, it's normally okay. But once again, I don't think there is a remove debuffs. We don't have debuff block. So you're going to have to play it carefully and try and execute this, the Agreth Spider Queen very, very quickly. You can use Helicath to block damage at least, so that will give you an advantage. So there's something there. So... Anyway, guys, that is the end of the video. Amius looks great. Uh, some of these bosses, this one is going to be potentially difficult for people if you don't have the right champions. And Soul Cross is as awful as it always normally is. But hey, it's a new rotation. I did say we would try and do Bommel. So I'm going to quickly jump to that. So I'm going to go with this strategy here. It's not great, but we're going to see how it goes. We're going to just try and build um, a bit of a team here that we're going to just be able to poison the boss. I've not really got any damage dealers. So hopefully the, the lack of stats and my speed will just help me kill this boss very quickly um, in this scenario. So you can see like the, the boss itself is not that tanky. So we can kind of build a little bit of damage on these supports to, to hurt. Now decrease in turn meter, never a good idea. So now we're on a dread bomb race and that's kind of the problem here. I'm just summoning dread bombs. So we've got to kill it now before those dread bombs take a turn, which is always a bit stressful. Uh, but, you know, hopefully we have got enough damage here that we can... We can do this. That was a big hit from Ghostborn. Ghostborn will do a fair amount of damage here, probably. And I think I'm just going to get away with the fact that I have strongly built champions. But you can see, like, if you don't have as much damage as I do, Evil Eye is going to hurt you. A1 decrease to decrease to me is going to hurt you. All of these things are going to punish you. But we did manage to get it done like that. So anyway, guys, good luck in your next rotation. This is the final rotation that we have on file. We don't know what's going to happen after this month. Are we going to go back to one? We'll have to wait and see. We will update the optimizer and the stages tool pretty quickly with all of the recommendations. So you start getting recommendations over the next coming days. But thanks for watching as always. And I'll catch you in the next video.